In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a quick and easy way to create outlines of your house in preparation for projection mapping for the holidays. It takes less than 15 minutes, involves very little time outside in the cold, and can be done with free software. The most commonly used method for projection mapping digital decorations on your house for holidays like Halloween or Christmas involves making outlines of your house first. The purpose of the outlines is to build up a picture of your house from your projector's point of view. That way, if you design a projection mapping show over this image and then play that show from your projector, it will match up or map onto your house. Some of you may have already seen tutorials for creating an outline of your house by manually drawing lines around the features of your home, but this method can be time consuming and involves sitting outside while you draw out the lines. The method I'm about to show you is extremely quick and drastically reduces the time spent outside. The important thing to say before you start this process is that your projector must be in its final fixed position. If you go through the steps of this tutorial and then move your projector, your outlines will no longer match up to the house and you will have to make them again. So assuming your projector is in its final fixed position, turn it on and connect it up to your laptop or computer. Once your projector is connected, you want to head into your display settings. I'm working on a Mac, so I access these settings by clicking on the Apple icon in the top left and choosing System Preferences, then heading into Displays, and then into the Arrangement tab. My projector is currently set up as an extended display. This window on the left represents my laptop display, which flashes red when I click it. This separate display on the right is my projector. This display setup means that I can work away here on my laptop while something else outputs from my projector. But for the first step in this process, I actually want my projector to send out a duplicate of my laptop display. In other words, I want my projector to mirror my laptop. So that means I need to turn on mirror displays here. The display will refresh and the new mirrored display will have the same resolution as my projector, which in my case is 1920 by 1080. And I can confirm there that the display is optimized for my Optoma 1080p projector. If you're on a PC, the fastest way to access your display settings is by right clicking on the desktop and selecting display settings. But alternatively, the settings can be found under the Start menu, Settings, System, and because Display is the first item in the list, it opens up already in the Display settings. As you can see, these displays are in extended mode. This display on the left is my computer monitor, and this separate display on the right is my projector. To switch so that my projector mirrors my computer display, I need to scroll down and under multiple displays, I need to change it from extend these displays to duplicate these displays. When I select this, my system automatically detects the resolution of the projector, which I can accept by clicking keep changes. And now my new duplicated display should be the same as my projector resolution, which I can check here and confirm, yes, it's 1920 by 1080, which is the same as my full HD projector. Now the projector is set up to mirror my laptop display. The next step is to open a web browser and visit whitedisplay.com. If I click this icon, it will go full screen. And because my projector is mirroring the display, my projector is outputting just white light across all pixels. Next, now my house is helpfully illuminated with white light, I'll take a photo using my phone from as close to the projector's lens as possible without blocking any light. I'm also trying to keep the projected image as centralized as possible. Once you've taken your photo, feel free to turn off your projector and go back inside. The next few stages don't require you to be outside with your projector. I'm now transferring the photo to my laptop and I'm renaming it House Reference to keep things organized. 
Now I'm going to use GIMP, which is a free graphics editing application that's available for Mac and Windows. Now you want to go to File, Open, and locate your house reference image. Mine came up as a recently used file, but you might need to navigate to where you save the image in the folder structure on the left. Click Open. Now go up to Filters and go to Edge Detect, Edge. You can play around with some of these parameters, but I'm going to turn Amount all the way down so the black areas stay nice and black. And voila, in a couple of clicks, we've made some ready-made outlines. Go to File, Export As, and save the image alongside your reference with a name that makes sense to you. I'll call mine House Edges, and I'm using a JPEG format. Click Export. I'm happy with these settings, so I'll hit Export again. I don't need this project anymore, so I'm going to quit GIMP without saving. Incidentally, if you'd rather complete this stage in Photoshop, the process is very similar. You would go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and apply the Glowing Edges filter, which is under Stylize. Again, you can adjust these parameters, and when you're happy, hit OK, and then export the image. Now it's time to go back outside, turn on my projector, and connect it to my laptop. For this next step, I want to switch my displays out of mirrored mode and go back into extended mode. So I'm going back into my display settings and I'm checking off mirror displays on my Mac. If you're on a PC, you're switching into extend these displays. The next stage requires some projection mapping software. Why do we need projection mapping software? You might be thinking, we have an image of the outlines of our house, aren't we done? Well, remember we took our reference image from just above the lens of the projector. So although the image is a very close representation of the projector's point of view, it is slightly offset and it isn't 100% accurate. So with the projection mapping software, we can make some adjustments to compensate for that offset and we'll be left with something that accurately represents the house as seen from the projector's lens. I'll be using MadMapper, which I have a license for, but the great news is that if you don't want to pay for it outright or rent it monthly, there is a free demo version which is perfectly adequate for the next steps of the tutorial. The only limitation of the demo that will affect you is a watermark over the output, but I'll talk about this a bit more in a moment. Import your edges image by clicking the plus icon under images on the right. Then add a quad. Next, go into the Manage Outputs tab, click on Video Output 1 and ensure that the destination is set up as your projector and not your computer display. Here is my Optoma projector, so that's correct. Next, I want you to go up to Output and go into Full Screen Mode. Now you should see your edges image coming out of your projector. Right now I'm viewing my input and output side by side. If I click here, I can view just my output, i.e. what's coming out of my projector, which is what I'm interested in. If I head back into my Surfaces tab and view just my output again, what I'm going to do now is move these corner handles, which allow me to manipulate my projector's output. This is also sometimes called corner pinning. The aim of the game is to try and match up the white outline details of my edges image with the corresponding physical features of the house. I like to try to match up distinctive little features like the notch on this drain pipe. Obviously the apex of this dormer window is a nice clear feature to use to match and the same goes for these other similar window roofs. And of course the rectangles of the window panes are great for matching up. So I'm just going to go around sequentially, corner to corner, and I'm doing my best to match the features in that corner. So for example, if I'm moving the bottom right corner handle, I'm focusing on the features in that bottom right corner and trying to match those up. You'll find that you adjust one corner and then all the other features you matched up elsewhere go out of whack. Don't worry, that's part and parcel of this process. With each pass, you'll gradually dial in a more accurate mapping. 
You can see that the software is snapping my handle to the corner there, which is actually unhelpful in this instance. So I can go up to view and turn off snap to objects. I'm really starting to like the mapping now. It's looking pretty accurate and I'm only having to make minor adjustments on this pass. I'm very happy with that as a finished mapping of my house. If you're encountering issues where one part of your mapping is accurate, but you just can't make the other parts align, then you could give yourself additional handles by going down here and swiveling open mesh warping and enabling it. Click Generate Grid and give yourself some subdivisions and click Apply. This way you can make more localized adjustments to your mapping while other regions are anchored by the extra points. You can reset the mesh at any time. If you need even more fine control, you can increase the level of subdivision which gives you more points and the adjustments become even more localized. But I'm happy with my mapping, so I'm going to disable mesh warping and now I'm ready to export my finished outlines. Firstly, I want to go up to output and come out of full screen mode and return to desktop mode. Then I'm going to change my display settings for the final time and switch back into mirrored display mode. Remember PC users that duplicate these displays. If I return to Mad Mapper and go into my Manage Outputs tab, I want to set my destination to my projector again. Notice my laptop display is missing from the list because now my projector is set up to mirror my laptop display, so they are essentially one and the same thing. Next, go up to Output and go into Full Screen Mode. Make a mental note of the shortcut of how to get out of full screen mode because once you go full screen, you won't have access to any of the interface anymore. Now we're seeing a 1920 by 1080 image of exactly how the projector sees the house. And I can capture this by making a screen grab. On a Mac, use the shortcut Command Shift 3. This will make a full screen snapshot and save the image to my desktop. To do the same on a PC, hold down the Windows key with the print screen key to make a full screen snapshot which will save within pictures inside a folder called screenshots. If you are using the demo version of MadMapper, you will have a watermark over your output. Even with the watermark, you can still see the outlines underneath, but if it bothers you, you can wait until it moves off the screen and quickly take your screen grab while it's not visible. And we're done. This is my accurate outline guide. It's 1920 by 1080, which is the same resolution as my projector, and it represents my house from my projector's point of view. It's ready to take into, say, After Effects or another video editing software, where I can design my holiday projection mapping show over the top of the outlines, here, for example, my comp is the same resolution as my projector and I've arranged these lights to match up to the features of the eaves and the windows. Now, if I were to turn off this guide, save out this video file and play it from my projector, it would match up to my house. Please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more house projection mapping tutorials and videos from me.